Hello and welcome. My name is Alan Biermacher from Digital Drafting Systems and this is going to be the second video in our module tour series for the Autodesk Construction Cloud and today we're going to be covering the account admin section. Okay, so continuing on from where we uh, were in the last video here from our acc.autodesk.com homepage, we're going to go ahead and click up here where it says account admin. And so once we get in here, I'm going to just kind of show you guys around here. So what we're going to see here on this first initial uh, option here is projects. So you're going to see your full list of projects inside of the account listed up above. You also have a drop down where you can switch to other accounts that you may uh, also be administrator of. And uh, one thing I do want to point out here on the projects page is that any project, uh, file, anything like that in the construction cloud, cannot really be deleted in most cases. Uh, it can only be archived and that's for security purposes and to keep people accountable. And so <clears throat> if we wanted to go ahead, for example, here and just archive a project, you can go ahead and click on these three dots and click archive project. So what that's gonna do is the project will no longer show up on your project list, but it will show up in this archive list up here. And using this, you can actually go ahead and uh, recover these projects by clicking again on these three dots clicking restore project all right the next section we're going to look at is our member section here now the member section is uh, basically where you'll go ahead and add any members that you may have here um, keep in mind that if you add members inside of your projects they will end up uh, being in here as well uh, depending on the member themselves and what they are and, and what they've been given access to you can see here for example we have project members project admins we have project admins and project members if you have different roles in different projects we also have an executive role and we have an account admin role as well so each of those has different purposes the account admin and executive uh, roles are the ones that are going to be relevant here at this upper level at the account admin level and uh, they're going to have very similar basically um, very similar roles in this case and permissions. Um, the big distinguishing factor really for an account administrator is the ability to come in on this account admin level and create projects. You can have administrators for individual project projects without issue, um, but unless they are account admins, they cannot create projects. That's the big distinguishing factor. Okay, the next thing we're gonna check out here is companies. So companies here, you'll be able to see the variety of companies that are in your projects. You'll also be able to see what their trade is, how many projects they're a member of in your group, and how many members there are from those companies. So again, just mostly uh, visual information. Uh, you can add a company here if you'd like to, but again, they will also automatically be added here as they are uh, added in the projects as well. The next area here is roles. So you can see here a variety of roles that come defined out of the box. Um, to be honest, I don't see people using roles a ton other than just for visually, you know, making it easy to know who's who. Um, but within the world of the construction cloud, a lot of your project and, you know, files, folders, things like that, permissions uh, can be set up either by individual, by company, or by role. And in most cases, I do see those being set up by company. But role is another great way to determine who should automatically have access to, you know, certain pieces of information, certain items, certain locations. And we'll talk about those permission settings a little bit more when we get to the docs section, which will be the next video. Okay, the next one here is going to be our project templates. This is where you can actually go ahead and create template projects. Um, and so, you know, when you jump into one of these template projects, You'll be able to uh, create a folder structure, put other pieces of information in there, uh, typically members as well. And so when you create a new project from there, that will bring in a lot of the data already. And so you won't have to recreate the projects from scratch. And so that can be useful. You can have an, you know, a number of projects so that, or a number of templates, I apologize, so that uh, you have templates for different scenarios. And again, same as we saw earlier, you have your, uh, your archive option here. You do actually have the ability to create a project directly from here, edit the name, and publish this. If you don't publish these, these are actually just private for you to see, not necessarily for everybody to see. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And then you can always recover those here from the archive section. 
Okay, library here is going to be used primarily for uh, cost management forms and parameters. Uh, more on the build side from what I've seen, so we're not really going to dive into those here. We're really focusing around the BIM Collaborate Pro side of things. But uh, if there are certain you know, variations of these items that you're using on a regular basis, you can create them here as well. The next thing we're going to look at is the apps section here. And so basically this is various existing pre-built integrations that exist here with other tools. And so you can go through here and essentially enable this for a tool that, you know, that already has essentially a, uh, a piece here that you want to integrate with. A lot of these typically you'll add them in. You need to sign in with your login information for that tool and it will open up that connection. Uh, I'm looking here for one. I know I had at least one set up here. Let's go to my apps. So Cloudsphere I have set up here. That's a backup tool, uh, primarily a migration tool. And so again, I have that set up and I'm able to use the integration um, from their platform as well as from the Autodesk platform. Okay, next will be custom integrations. This is where you can actually add certain tools uh, either with a developer that you have developing tools for you or with um, you know, some of these are just experiments that I've been doing or, or some, uh, some Autodesk tools, custom integration tools that, that have been built out. So you can go ahead and add those in this view right here. Now, next thing we're going to do is jump over to the settings area. And so the important thing here to look at are a couple important things. First, if you need to go ahead and change your account name right here, you can do that by clicking the edit button up there. And so that's going to be your hub name. Going down a little bit further, your account ID, I'm going to blur ours out here. Um, but essentially, that's a piece of information that uh, is an identification number for your hub. So going forward, you have any issues, you have some issue, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, I would suggest keeping that handy somewhere uh, in case you lose access, in case of anything like that. That will help the folks at Autodesk track down that uh, account and, and, you know, figure out whatever needs to be figured out for it. Additionally, here we have some other account permissions and the requirement for members to complete a two-step verification to access your projects from a security standpoint. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to go ahead and show, our, uh, show us here is if we go to this BIM 360 admin area and click on settings. Some of you may know the BIM 360 that exists is, is like an old version of BIM 360, but is still accessible and the licenses that you have now still work for. It kind of works in parallel, and if we go back here, one thing I didn't point out back at our projects was if we look here, we have some projects that have a little globe and some that have a little B. Those B projects are BIM 360 based projects. And so when we jumped over to this BIM 360 area, you know, there, there are some pieces of information that are a little bit different. For, for the most part, the data is going to be reflected back and forth. But the important thing that you can find here is under analytics. So Right here under analytics is a great place to see how many months are remaining on the uh, contract that you're using for uh, your Autodesk Construction Cloud. And you can see what your renewal date is. Sometimes it's a nice way to just make sure after a renewal that your ex expiration date of your site has been extended, things of that nature. You also have some other data here, um, but nothing I'm going to focus on too much today. Okay, so that concludes this section. Uh, the next section, uh, we are going to go ahead and jump into our project admin area, and we'll go ahead and give you a tour of that. Okay, thank you all for being here.